My name is Waqas, I'm a, a dentist um, in Manchester and I was formerly the president of, of the Muslim students in the United States. We need to understand why the book is important in the first place. Right. Um, the wider community has almost 1,000 years of missing history from 600 AD to 1600 AD, which are generally called the Dark Ages. And it's amazing to think 1,000 years just went missing. And, and of course there was no Dark Ages really. This was, this was one of the times one of the ages when Muslims were most successful, uh, making the most contribution um, to wider society and to the world as a whole. Really, it's our job um, to allow people to understand the contribution that was made because only when we understand where we've come from or our history can we work towards the future. And now in these somewhat troubled what contributions time? were made by yes. us in the past. How did we contribute to wider society? Because this contributes to com community cohesion so our neighbours will understand how we were how we were living, how we were working. Um, so really, I, I, I personally think that the job of the book is not just to, to have the book necessarily only in, in the universities and in the libraries, but really to flood the wider community with this knowledge, with this understanding. Because the work of people like um, Da Vinci, um, you know, everyone knows this name, um, but, but was built on the great work done by his predecessors, the people who went before him. Um, and so it's our job to, to remind people because sometimes they have this amnesia Kabi kabi bhul jate hai na ke you know what what happened before how things were done before the contributions that were made yes. by by Ibn Khaldun by um, Kindi by Ibn Battuta um, by by many people by many people in the past it's you know it's 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 our job to remind them so that the names of of, of our great thinkers and scholars of the past go side by side with um, Da Vinci and Michelangelo oh, and Raphael. hospital system. Yes, um, that we see today was was inspired by the Muslims. By the the book shows it very nicely. The whole the whole hospital system um, and how hospitals were 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 absolutely crucial at that time. In fact, the modern day NHS that we see today um, was inspired by the Muslims to have free healthcare, um, which is an amazing concept that every single person, regardless of of, of wealth, age, or creed, can have um, free healthcare. In, in, in this country I think is an absolutely amazing idea an absolutely amazing concept um, even even things like the, s the stitch that we that we yes. see today that, that we use day by day um, was <laughs> it, a contribution it belongs to your profession absolutely yes. the, the oral health care um, yes. things like the the miswak and thing and things of that order Brush. all inspired yes. by the Muslims how long ago were we talking about about oral health care so so I think everyone if they really looked and, and made an effort would really see that just scratch below the surface and, and the information is there for you. This is a great tool, an amazing tool. You know, there's, there's things like the website which, which, which are contributing to these um, projects. But really we need to, you know, flood it so, so people understand that, you know, the vast contri contribution, not only made by the, you know, Judeo-Christian um, individuals and contributors to society, but that, that our society today is built on, you know, the Judeo-Muslim Christian um, standing. Science and technology today is very important, but also the social welfare and the system, the socio-political system that we have is also very important. One is the child benefit, that every woman who is with baby benefits today. This child benefit story originated from the time of the second caliph, Umar ibn al-Khattab, when he heard a child screaming, the woman cannot say, keep him uh, sort of happy and then the, the, the baby kept crying all the time and he asked the woman why don't you uh, keep make him quiet she said I don't have milk in my breast he said buy milk she said I don't have any money and he then said by God from now on the treasury that means the money from the government will pay for every woman who brings a child so the child will get but then later on he said that the woman should also as soon as she becomes pregnant she has a salary from the treasury so that that is a very important issue the second one is the what we enjoy today as the uh, old age pension when we get old like i'm now getting we we get money from the uh, pension but this is m money and our our own money we save with the government uh, right and and with insurance and then we get paid after we are 65 but original history of this, people not aware, is also with Umar ibn al-Khattab. He sorry. once was uh, uh, in the street as a caliph, that means the head of state. He saw a Jewish old person, 
And this Jewish old person was begging in, in Medina. He said, why are you begging? It's not right. He says, well, ha well I have got nothing. He said, so Umar said, uh, oh my, my God, may Allah forgive us. Though you are a young, you, when you were a young Jew, we used you. And we used your intelligence and your muscles and your youth. Now when you are old, we have abandoned you. Then he went back and he made a decision by the government that every old person when he reaches that age will get a salary from the state. This is not the salary, the pension that he had, not like our pension today. Like because social security? Yeah, the social security today is using our own money. Right. That you save yourself, you pay national insurance contributions. In the time of Omar, it was very advanced, very socialistic type system. And the Labour Party should think that Omar is their established, uh, you know, the most important historical role model for them. Because he has set up this. And he has taken money from the government treasury to give to the old people. Imagine Muslim and non-Muslim, this one was a Jewish person. The third one is in the time of Ali. Uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, uh, wajha, anhu, alayhi salam, Imam Ali. He was the caliph, the fourth caliph. Right. And he once lost his uh, shield, you know, this shield which you protect yourself with. He couldn't find it. He, he, he lost it. So one day he found it uh, with somebody. And that person was Jewish in the Medina. So he said to him, this is my shield. He says, sorry, no, it is mine. He says, but it is mine. This is the Khalif, you know. It is like uh, is the like prime king? minister, the king. Yes. You know, saying he the was person. the king at that he time. He said, okay, we go to the court. So they went to the court. The, the judge, the Qazi, his name was Qazi Shuraih. They went to him. As they walked in, the Qazi didn't stand up, get frightened and say, oh, Khalif, you know, coming here. Yeah, you know, he didn't even call him Abu Hassan. He didn't call him, oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Prince of Believers. And, and he said, because they are in a court. He said, stand next to each other. And he asked Ali to go a little bit further, just only a couple of centimeters further from the other person, from the Jewish person. So he asked Ali, he says, you are the one who has uh, made the case. What is the case? Is I, I, my, he's got my, my shield. So he said to him, have I any proof? He said, no, I can bring my sons, Hassan, Hussein, to te testify. He said, sorry, in Islam, testimony of children is not allowed. Yeah? Because right. they will decide for you. And then the, uh, he said, uh, I'm sorry, the, since you don't have a case against this person, he said to the Jewish person, this is your shield. Then as they left the court, the Qazi stand up and then he said to the Khalif, he said, I'm sorry, and, and this is the case, this is, you know, the Lord. He said, Ali to him, he said, Ali, Ali said to him, he said, look, by God, if you had made a different judgment, I would have fired you. And whilst they were talking, this Jewish person came with all his family. And they came into the courtroom with all his family, uh, his children, his wife, and so on. And he said, I declare that there is no God but Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. The shield is actually for Ali, but I wanted to test the justice system in Islam. So these incidents from the Muslim heritage, when you find, these are role models. It tells us that early in Islam, early the Muslims have woken to the fact that the importance of separating the judicial system, the legal system, from the government and the political system. This is a very important contribution. Unfortunately, Muslims now don't do that. The Western societies in England, which is the most you know, uh, respecting uh, 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 nation to the law and the legal system, the judge can, f can go to the prime minister and bring him to court, right? And the people will defend the judge and not the prime minister. So these issues, I think, are extremely important to learn about the social justice, and these are new things. There's also last uh, Saturday, somebody asked about the financial system, and you asked me about zakah. But the financial system, there are many systems in the world that we use today, they originally come from uh, the Muslim contributions, like the check, like the insurance, like the, uh, the idea of destroying inflation.